Hello and welcome back everybody. In this video we will with the help of an example illustrate how the linear congruent generator actually works. So for an example we need to say what is m, what is a, what is c and what's x0. So let's do it like we did it in the book and said m equals 8, a equals 5, c equals 1 and x0 equals 0. And let's just see whether we can work out what these rules do. So x0 is given, we have this. Then x1 is a x0 plus c mod m. That is this rule for n equals 1. So we need to plug in the numbers. That is 5 times 0 plus 1 mod 8. And 5 times 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 mod 8 is 1. Then x2 is a x1 plus c mod m is 5 times 1 plus 1 mod 8 is 6 mod 8 is 6. And the first time something interesting happens is for n equals 3, namely here we get 5 times 6 plus 1 mod 8, which is 31 mod 8. So we need to find out what's the remainder if we divide 31 by 8. Well, 8, 16, 24. So that is 3 times 8 plus 7. So the remainder is 7. And from there we could go on. So that is how these steps are done. And the whole point of this is we should be able to do that on a computer. So let's switch to R and see whether we can write a bit of R code which does this. And we can use what we just did for checking. So we had x0 we started with. And then that x0 was plugged in here to get 1. That 1 was plugged here to get 6 and that 6 was plugged in here to get 7. So we should get 0, 1, 6, 7 when we try to do the same thing in R. So what do we need? First we need to fix our parameters and I just use R variables for that. So let's say m is 8, a is 5, c, the increment is 1 and the seed is 0 run that. Nothing happens here. It just sets these variables. So the naive way of writing that would be x1 is a times x0 plus c mod m. So if we do that, then we get 1 and you see that is consistent with what we had before. But that is not so sustainable because what we really want is to do some loop here. So I want to say for i in say 1 to 10, to do 10 steps like this. And then I need to write here something that the result of the previous computation is plugged in the formula here. So we get a new result, but that should be the same one we use in the next iteration. So we need to use the same variable in R for what's x0 and x1 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm introducing something which is called xi that starts with x0. And then in every step that is updated so that the new xi equals a times the old xi plus c mod m. So that should work. It has no output yet. If I run that, then xi equals 6. And we don't know that will be the tenth value. So what I should do here really is so with this command, we get some output. If I run that again, it says for i equals 1, xi is 1, for i equals 2, xi is 6, for i equals 3, xi is 7, and so on. And we can make that a bit nicer by plugging the x in the subscript. Let's try that. So this is where we get nice output. So let's just compare that with what we got on the tablet. We got 1, 6, 7, same as here. So that worked. These were the values we did by hand. And here we see without any extra effort the following values. So that seems to work nicely. Before I go on, I just want to bring that in a slightly more reusable form. I want to write a R function, which does what we just did, but where you can substitute m, a, c, and x0. So what do we need to do? First, we need to settle on a name and let's just call it RLCG, following the logic that the built-in random number generators, they all start with R. And normally that would have the name of the distribution here, but since we are interested in the method for now, so let's just write LCG. And now we need to say maybe how many random values we want. So let's do n. And then we need to specify m, a, c, and x0. So we should 
plug in something here which gives us these values. So the first thing we could just do is we could copy that in here. Then if I run that, now nothing happens because I have so far just defined the function. But if I now call it, I type on the right, RLCG, and say I want 10 values and M is 8, A is 5, C is 1, and X0 is 0. I can do that and I get the old output. I made a mistake. Can you spot it? It is not a serious mistake. It will not affect the output. But this n here is meant to be how many random numbers we get. And I still had my 10 in. So I should have done it like this. But of course here I chose 10. So that made no difference. But if I choose 5 here now it will go to fewer values. Now I want to change this function just for you to see how that is done. So that it works more like the random number generators built into R. And what I want to do is I want to do it so that it returns the random numbers and we can print them afterwards. So let's throw out the printing here. And instead what we do is we define a vector say result. For now I just do an empty vector of n numbers. So if I type numeric 5 say then I get a vector of 5 numbers. And because I haven't said what the numbers are they will be all 0. And then I can fill them all in here. So I can now say result i is xi. And here I need to write return result to get it back. So if we do that function, then if I type the same command, you see it doesn't print it in our nice form again because we removed the cat statement which writes to the screen. And instead what it does is it gives us back a vector of numbers. So we can now write x is this and then we can print x or plot x or do all kinds of things with it. Just to try that out, now instead of 5 I get 100,000 values and we wouldn't have wanted to print 100,000 rows to the screen but I can still say do a histogram of x. It looks funny because R by default sets the breaks on integers. So for example there is a boundary between two bars at 1 and it's not quite clear whether the number 1 is now in the bar to the left of 1 or to the right of 1. And it turns out for some reason the zeros come out to the right of zeros at the left hand bar and for every other number the values come out to the left. And to avoid all of this what I will do I will just set the breaks at half integers. So say from minus 0.5 up to 7.5 in steps of length 1. And then you see all numbers to the precision of this plot occur with equal frequency. That's what we hope for. To a smaller example, if we do 10 numbers, then we see every number occurred once except 1 and 6, which occurred twice. Good. So this is how we do the LCG in R, one way of doing it. And I should just mention you should not actually do that. So that is here for you to learn how random number generators work. But you should instead use the built-in random number generator, which is more optimized and it is more certain that it is correct. So that is only for demonstration purposes. Now I want to just switch to Wikipedia. So here is the Wikipedia page for the linear concurrential generator. There are some pictures illustrating the rules and down here is the formula we have just discussed. And here are the names, multi modulus, multiplier, increment and seed. But what I want to go to is there is a table of commonly used values and that is a bit outdated, namely the LCG is no longer considered a state-of-the-art random number generator. So nowadays it's used only rarely. But if you look at these numbers, so that is like numerical recipes is a book. And in this book they recommended use the LCG with these parameters. 2 to the power of 32 is rather large. And Borland C and C++ compiler used that. And I just want to go here with this one because that is suggested by the C standard and we can just try that out now. We can do the same thing. So M is 2 to the 31. Let's just do LCG. Let's for now just get 10 values. Then M is the first argument is 2 to the 31. A is this very specially chosen number. I can actually write names here to make it easier to see which is which. Then C is this. And we get to choose the seed, so let's just say x0 is 0. So you see again we get a sequence of numbers. Only now since m is so large, they are in a very large range. 
But that is a method which was in practical use maybe still 10 years ago or definitely 20 years ago. And you see there are different choices of parameters. The story behind these numbers is in the book I wrote one theoretical result without proof which tells you choices of these parameters where the output has some good properties. I'm not going into this in this video, but please have a look in the book. The other thing I want to show you is also on the internet, namely, let's just check. So there is a R function z.seed and this is the normal way to choose the seed for the built-in random number generator. So here I just had my function where I say what is the seed here, but R instead keeps track of what's the current state between calls. So if you call R norm say twice, you get different numbers because it has remembered what was the seed and then the state is updated and after is a given number of calls, it still knows what is the state. And this oddly named variable is an integer vector containing the random number generator state. That is what I called S earlier. And it here says here, set.seed is the recommended way to specify seeds. So I'm now going to the built-in random number generator and let's not worry, let's just say R unif one. That gives us one standard uniformly distributed number. If I do it again, then I get a slightly different one. Again, I get a totally different one. And set.seed sets the initial state. Let's see if I set this to zero, get a random number. I set it to zero again and get a random number. I get the same number. So the point is this and this is the same because with this command and that command, I fix the current state to be zero. And then when I do one step of the algorithm, I get this number. That works also for more numbers. So if I have the seed zero and then get myself three numbers. If I repeat this, I get the same three numbers. So set seed zero and then I think I can write R unif three to get three at once. So 0 0.89 is this one, 0 0.265 is this one and 0 0.372 is this one. So that is how we set the seed. We will discuss what this is good for in a little while. And there is some more to come here, namely there is a complicated framework in R, but what I want to see, show you is kind says which type of random number generator to use. And here it says the default value is what's called the mass hand twister. And if you look through the list, I think the linear concurrency generator is not even on anymore because it is outdated kind of, but the mass hand twister follows exactly the same scheme I showed you before. So there is some internal state which for the mass and twister is much larger than for the LCG and there is a function to update the state and then there is a second function to produce outputs. And here is an article also on Wikipedia about the mass and twister and I would recommend if you're interested go and have a look about that. Good and that finishes our discussion about the linear concurrential generator. Again the important thing to keep in your mind is this diagram and the consequence that if we fix the seed we will get the same output and this output, this output is completely deterministic. So given the seed we always will get the same numbers. So we can shake a, take a different seed, we get different numbers but these numbers are clearly not random because we have a rule how they are computed so we can redo them on demand. And what I wrote initially is that a pseudo random number generator produces a sequence of numbers which can be used as a replacement for true random numbers. It's very clear that can only be a replacement. There's no chance we get true random numbers here. And in the next video we will discuss how can we argue that it is a replacement and we will discuss different ways of measuring the quality of pseudo random number generators.